Hello kiddies and welcome to another Cucumber Peel and Leaf Thrilling episode of Techspert Weekly. And let me just start with a brief apology if it looks or sounds like I'm about to f***ing die this week. Your Uncle Spurt has been a bit poorly these last few days. I seem to have picked up some sort of stomach bug on a stag do in Norwich last weekend. At least I hope it's just a stomach bug. I did at one point get very close to an amorous duck so it might be a touch of bird flu. But either way, I've been very much living up to the Uncle Spurt name this week. Imagine taking a Twinkie in your fist and then squeezing it so hard that it violently explodes at both ends. And that, that's pretty much the picture right there. I thought it would be more appropriate if the insides were chocolate and custard maybe. But seriously, right now I am a husk. A literal husk. But anyway, I'm just about back in action now. I uh, haven't really had any time to prepare, but here's a brief squint at the fresh new Motorola Razr flip phone that is coming out next week for the five people who haven't turned off in disgust already. Let's jingle it before I redecorate the studio in hint of stomach acid. Techspert Weekly! Now, fans of foldable phones and nostalgia nerds in general are possibly waiting expectantly for next week to become this week and for Motorola to finally unveil the fresh new Motorola Razr. This incredibly brief Twitter teaser from Motorola's global team shows that a new flip bendy phone is coming next Thursday, June the 1st. Or possibly two new phones, it's kind of hard to see, especially if you've ruined your eyesight with decades of self-flagellation over questionable hentai. It could just be the same phone twice, or maybe one flip phone where the hinge fell apart or something. That said, those lovely internet rumours do suggest that a pair of Motorola bendy phones will be announced at next week's event, possibly called the Motorola Razr 40 and Razr 40 Ultra. That Ultra model should look similar to last year's rather ruddy good Razr 2022, but with an even bigger cover screen. And this should be more convenient for quickly fiddling about in apps or replying to messages without going to all the effort of actually opening up the bugger. We've already seen some renders from EV leaks which are seriously trouser rousing, while x developers reported that that outer screen would be a 3.5 inch beast. Although a significant chunk of that display is unfortunately blocked by the dual rear cameras which could be bloody annoying. Kind of like going to the cinema and finding that you're sat behind Jacob Rees pissing Mog. Now using my incredible powers of reading things off the internet, it appears that that dual camera setup will consist of a 12 meg primary shooter, possibly using the Sony IMX563 sensor that was also stuffed inside of Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 4. And that should be backed by a basic 13 meg ultra wide angle effort. Now the Z Flip 4 with that IMX563 was competent if not fantastic for photography. It certainly did struggle a bit in ambient conditions. But of course a large part is played by image processing so I'll reserve judgement until I actually test out the new Razer. Apparently the new Razer 40 Ultra will be powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 rather than the fresher 8 Gen 2. So that's the same chipset that was stuffed inside of last year's Razer 2022. If these rumours aren't just a sloppy pile of internet offal then it is a shame that there's no upgrade to that performance. But the Ultra should still be beefy enough to happily handle any apps and games, complete with a dedicated gaming mode. And it sounds like sweet FE has changed for the internal display either. It's yet another 6.7 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED screen with 144Hz refresh and only a wee selfie cam orifice up top. Apparently that'll be a 32 meg selfie cam, so ideal for a bit of Skyping, zooming, Microsoft Teams and if you really hate yourself. As for the battery, well last year's 3500 mAh battery has apparently been boosted to 3640 mAh for the Ultra, while the 30 watt wide charging has also upgraded to 33 watts. Four. Don't go too crazy guys. But unlike previous generations, the battery life of the Motorola Razr 2022 was thankfully and surprisingly not cack. So the Razr 40 Ultra should hopefully last a full day. As for the regular Motorola Razr 40, well it appears that this will feature a considerably dinkier cover screen, more of a skinny sausage shape like the Galaxy Z flip phones. There's been next to no chat about the regular Motorola Razr 40 on the internet so far, but pulling on my predictive pants for a second, I reckon it'll sport very similar specs if not pretty much identical to that Ultra model just with a smaller cover screen. And what I reckon Motorola is going for with this one is the most affordable flip slash foldable phone that you can get right now. So the Moto Razr from last year, the 2022 model, is currently 800 quid. I reckon it'll be around that, if not a little bit less, maybe 749. And here's hoping the Moto Razr 40 Ultra will also cost under a grand, maybe around sort of 900-ish, 
to make it a really enticing alternative to the likes of Oppo's Find N2 Flip, which you can grab for 849 right now. But of course, we have seen in the past that my predictions are generally about as reliable as a chocolate car. So come back in a week's time, we'll see how much utter bollocks I've been spouting. But anyway, kiddies, that's all the thrilling tech news I had time to prepare in the brief moments where I didn't have my face lodged in a toilet bowl. So now it's time for the part of the show that would normally have me empty in my bowels if I wasn't a husk, a literal husk. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> All right, so this week we are kicking off with Declan. You're right, Declan, who says, Join the club. I am now bald as a bat. I've suffered from epilepsy for 30 years, thankfully under control with meds, but I've had to have my head shaved to the bone because of brain surgery. Absolutely love your comments. Best wishes from Galway Island. Okay, here's me absolutely mourning on because I've been a wee bit gushy this week. And here's you, uh, like having endured brain surgery after three decades of epilepsy, and you're considerably more upbeat. Fair play, mate. I definitely, I need to try harder to be more positive in general, but not too positive right now. If I so much as smile enthusiastically, I'll probably fill my pants, to be perfectly honest. Richard says, I just like the fact that this was more about phones and tech. Christ, am I starting to get like all the other YouTube twats actually banging on about tech in my tech videos? Clearly the answer to this is more booze. Cyril Thomas says, that Apple part was the brutal truth about Apple. Too bad not many people see it. I can't even remember what I said about Apple in last week's episode now, but I'm assuming it was less than complimentary. I did occasionally used to wonder if the Apple Inquisition ever actually watched my videos while sharpening their metaphorical or possibly literal knives, but they clearly don't actually listen to any feedback or give any f**ks, so I highly doubt it. Zippy says, come for the techie bollocks, stay for the Apple vitriol. Wow, I must have really let them have it in that episode. Paul N says, Uncle Spartacus, I was wondering if you tried either Tamnavulan Speyside Single Malt or Airston Sea Cask. That is uncanny because Speyside was actually one of the whiskies that we tried out at the Stag Do last week in Norwich. Smoother than a Chippendales nutsack it was. I should probably point out here as well for any younger viewers that the Chippendales were a bunch of stripping dancing lads from back in the day. I'm not talking about the reproductive organs of a pair of Disney cartoon squirrels. Not yet, anyway, there's still a good 5-10 minutes to go. Anywho, Paul N also asks, do you think that the moderators even know what Felchin is? I mean, you've basically cottoned onto my plan to avoid demonetization here, which is to make all of the filthy bits as weird and obscure as possible. So then the poor buggers whose job it is to sit there and actually watch this shit and determine whether these videos are worthy of ads, just straight up give up after 5 minutes of googling horrific, bizarre sex acts. Bert Macklin says, really hope the new Xperia 1 and 5 series are non-camera nerd friendly with the Mark 5s. I tried the Xperia 5 Mark 2, but I ended up returning it with my main issue being the auto camera app was shit compared to its Samsung counterpart. Yeah, I've never really understood why Sony just assumed that everyone who liked their Xperia smartphones would also be an absolute whiz with the DSLR and willing to spend ages editing their pics. Yeah, spoiler alert for the Xperia 1 Mark 5, that auto mode is so much better than on previous generations of the Xperia smartphones. But tested this bad boy out for a few days now, I'm going to take out my holidays soon, give it a thorough, thorough testing, and then hopefully full review in just over a week. And Graham Cartwright says he's a keen photographer, even studied at a college back in the 1990s when it was all film and you had to wait until you'd shot all 24 or 36 photos before you could develop the images and see what absolute crap you'd taken. Yeah, those were the day when rolls of film were an absolute Russian roulette, especially after a night out. It's like, should I pay Boots 10 quid to develop this or should I just put it straight in the bin right now? Because inevitably about half the photos would just be a blurry shot of your mate's left ear and the rest of the roll would just be Kevin with his head down the ball puking up five pints of blue drink. And of course, because cameras back then weren't fantastic anyway, they'd all be horrifically blurry and grainy and out of focus. And then just to rub further salt in the wound, some boots pleb would stick a sticker on each one saying, this photo is a bitch, but don't blame us. On the flip side though, no digital photography from my younger days means no online evidence. Phew. One hot moments later. All right, so your, uh, your uncle spurt had to take a brief break from filming. Um, so yeah, I'm not feeling particularly sound of body Right now, we're going to crack on for a couple more comments at least before I have to let's go pass out face first on the bathroom floor again. As uh, so John Paul Graham says, when can we expect to see the Sony Xperia 5 Mark 5? And also, I noticed the complete lack of Oppo talk. 
Uh, yeah, it's, it's looking very much like Oppo is done in blighty, unfortunately, which is a real shame. I really like their phones, some cracking hardware. But then on the flip side, less Oppo phones means less phones for me to review and therefore more time for drinking. And I also really like drinking, so win. Uh, others Sing Pure says, why did I Google Felchin? How do you unread? You see, the plan works. Matt Sidford says, ah, typical weather in England. Guessing you must be waiting the Ashes cricket to cheer you up. I'll take more than some friggin' men hitting balls with bats to cheer me up right now, mate. But I'll tell you what, though, like, cricket should be my go-to sport of choice because it lasts all bloody day long and you can take in all the booze you fancy. However, I am still getting through some schoolyard-related cricket trauma, so I'm trying to stay clear of it as much as possible. DMC says, question, will there be a Samsung A24? Well, it's relying on good old mate Googles for that one. Okay, so apparently there already is a Galaxy A24, it just hasn't made it to Blighty yet. Sounds very similar to the A23, except you've got an AMOLED screen now. Born a time. Morco says, why don't you review the Samsung tablets? Well, usually it's because Samsung launches the tablets at the same time as several smartphones and laptops and wearables and bugger loads of other stuff. They don't, don't like doing one or two things at once. But uh, yeah, no point taken. I will try and review the Samsung tablets in the future because they look pretty bloody good, to be fair. Tor says, the Google Pixel Fold won't be available in Norway, of course. Norway only got access to the Google phones half a year ago, apparently. Almost wondering if Norway is regarded as a third world country. Half a year ago is pretty mental, definitely. I mean, maybe Google Pixel phones don't do particularly well in the cold. Or Google just reckons you've already spent all of your money on the ridiculously priced booze. But you know, on the flip side, you guys also have the longest road tunnel in the entire world. So that possibly makes up for it. I know I totally didn't know that, I just googled it quickly. Uh, Jonathan Hitchcock says, Recently, these new Xiaomi phones seem much more expensive and great deals seem to be no more. Yeah, the, the flagship phones are definitely getting at least as expensive as most other flagship blowers out there, but Xiaomi do occasionally just knock 200, 300 quid off their phones in just random online sales, so it's always worth keeping an eye out. And if you want really good value for money, the Pocos and the Redmi's is where it's at. The Poco F5 and the F5 Pro, if you haven't checked out my uh, videos of those on the TechSpert, highly recommend them. On the subject of Poco meaning Prozzi in Kenya, as we were discussing last week, uh, Ben Knight says Lego ran into a similar, less crude version of that problem when they marketed the Toa set from Bionicle over in Sweden, where the word Toa apparently means toilet. There's lots of confused Swedish kids wondering why Lego was releasing sets with an evil buddy getting thwarted by six mighty toilets. To be fair, that still sounds better than 90% of the cartoons I used to watch as a kid. Ninja Toilet Bastards, unite! Oh, got a bit too enthusiastic with that last one. Let's, let's, let's calm it down, kiddies. In fact, let's make this the, uh, the last comments of the week, because, uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's a good time to end the video. Uh, Will says, when is Veronica going to be a special guest? I mean, to be honest, she probably would have been a great stand-in for this episode. She's an awful lot better looking than me. She doesn't have to go off and do toilet things every five seconds. Anyway, a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. That has cheered me up no end. And let's have a quick squint at what's happening next week. This is about next week. Well, next week, boys and girls, I'm supposed to be on bloody holiday, so hopefully the old digestive system is functioning a bit better then. Gonna go off uh, with this bad boy here, the Xperia 1 Mark V, and take lots of touristy snaps. Hopefully mostly of cold pints of lager on a nice sunshiny day. So stay tuned for my in-depth review of that bad boy. We've got content going up next week, all the same, regardless of the fact that I'm buggering off. Please do smash your comments down below. There won't be a Textbook Weekly next week, but the week after we'll get through as many of those as possible. In the meantime, have yourselves a bloody wonderful week. See you on the flip side. Love you.